Hey everyone. So today's tech tip is um, a reminder, I guess, a couple of reminders. We all, I think, have heard the rumors that Google Meet updates are happening. Um, and there are a couple of things that I wanted to share about that and also let you know um, in the way of a reminder about Google Meet and things that we face that you know look different to students and things like that. So the updates that you may or may not have been lucky enough to um, experience so far already are the following. Number one, there will now be a blue shield icon in the lower left of your Google Meet screen. Um, there will also be sort of a slider that allows you to choose the number of people in your tiled view. There will also be another option where you can blur your background and another option that allows you to integrate Jamboard. So you could sort of launch a whiteboard right there in your Google Meet. So here's what a couple of those things look like. When you go into Google Meet like that, you'll see this blue icon down here. Um, it enlarged is like that. It's like a little lock and key thing. When you click that, that's where you have the option to um, set the settings so that students must be admitted into the Google Meet instead of just automatically being added. You know, you click the link and you're automatically in. You can change that. You can make it so that, you know, you get an alert and you actually have to admit them in. Um, that's also, this blue shield is also where you would turn on or off the ability for the participants of your meet to share their screen and the ability of the participants to participate in the chat in the in the Google Meet. Teachers, you know, have complained that both of those things were problematic. Um, so you can turn that off. By the way, you can go back to this blue shield it's, uh, and change the settings midway through. So you might start the first 20 minutes of your class where no one has the ability to share their screen because you know you're gonna be sharing your screen and you don't want anyone to sort of hijack what you're doing. Um, but maybe 20 minutes in, it's time for the kids to start sharing or certain groups to start sharing. You can go back to this blue shield at any time and toggle that on or off. The other features um, live down in the three dots. I don't, you can't see the three dots here. I think you can see it here, right? So the three dots in the lower right of your screen. Um, one of the new options that may have appeared for you already is whiteboard open a jam and that will allow you to launch jamboard which is part of the google suite i'll be making a video on that very soon um and it allows you to sort of screen share and collaborate live on a whiteboard right inside your google meet so it's a little bit more of that one-stop shopping where jamboard and meet are integrated um, we're also going to see somewhere in here, I don't have it yet, whiteboard just came up for me today. It was not there yesterday. Uh, and a friend of mine also now has blur background as one of the options. I don't have that yet. Maybe it'll be here tomorrow or in a couple of days. Uh, we were told that these rollouts, you know, were sort of a slow and random rollout. So even within our organization, some teachers got some features first, some teachers, you know, are still waiting. Um, the first feature that I received, I think it was maybe two or three days ago, was this one with the tiled view. I think prior to the new uh, update, we had, I think Spotlight was there and Sidebar and Tiled, but the maximum we could see was 16. And, you know, as many teachers know, that is not a normal class size and we often have more kids than that. So now without any Chrome extensions or anything like that, in fact, you probably have to um, delete some Chrome extensions. Now those extensions may interfere with the functionality of Google Meet itself. So you might want to get rid of that one if you had one of those grid view extensions. Now, when you're in your Google Meet, you can you know, use this little slider thing and the maximum uh, is no longer 16. It can go all the way up to 49. So this change layout um, option also lives down by the three dots and you can um, you know, adjust that now up to a maximum of 49. Um, the other things I wanted to remind you guys of, for some reason, 
we can't figure out why. I don't know if it's the version of iPad, if it's the version of iOS software. I'm not sure what the reason is, but it's not a lie. We thought kids were, you know, making up a story. Oh, I can't go to the Google Meet today. I, I don't have the link. Um, it is true for some kids. We now know that one of the updates that arrived over the summer was inside Google Classroom. There is an auto-generated Google Meet link for each Google Classroom that you create. And um, it's sort of a quick access. Again, that one-stop shopping, right? So you don't have to go into your calendar and generate a link and then share the link out with your students or you know other team members. Uh, now that link is there and you can um, switch it to be visible or not visible in the banner of your Google Classroom. For some reason, some kids are not able to see that link. Some kids, instead of the link, see a little camera icon. Um, either one works. So depending on the type of device that you use, if you see the link, obviously you click the link. If you see the camera, you click that. However, there are some kids, I've seen it live and in person, they just don't have either one. So I'm, you know, sort of begging <laughs> the teachers that I work with to, you know, just as a courtesy until they figure out what this issue is with the students, um, to please copy and paste the Google Meet link in your stream just put pin it to the top you know make it the first thing that kids see when they join your you know enter your class uh they know exactly you know click here there's a live meet going on the other thing we should know about that live meet link is this it functions the same way a google meet nickname works okay so there are uh, some security or restriction features, which are really good, but now we're discovering they can also have some downsides. So whether you generate a Google Meet link with a nickname or you're using the auto-generated one in Google Classroom that you know lives inside that banner, it's great because it keeps people who are outside of your organization out. So anyone in my case whose email address does not end with our school name dot org um, can't get in. They no longer can get in. If I generated a Google Meet link in my calendar, then anybody could get in. I may have to admit them if they're outside of our organization, but it's open to anyone. The classroom ones and nickname ones, that's not the case. So it's great because it keeps some of that meat bombing that has been so prevalent, you know, to a minimum, right? So if a kid is, you know, using his or her phone with his or her personal email, they're not, you're not even going to get a little doorbell. We tested it out. Uh, you know, a friend of mine and I said, okay, try and get into my classroom link, you know, from your phone with your personal email. And she couldn't, I didn't get any kind of alert to say someone was trying to enter. And she inst instead got an error message that said, you know, this link is unavailable or something along those lines. So it will definitely keep out unwanted guests. But the problem is that now we're using, you know, Google Meet all the time. And sometimes we want outsiders, right? So we've had the experience where we have a student teacher or a guest speaker or some other invited guest or visitor to your Google Classroom. They can't become members of your classroom, but they can join your Google Meet normally. However, if you are using that one that lives inside the banner, um, we tested this as well, your you know, student teacher, for example, can't enter that way. So if you know that you are going to have, you know, an outside guest speaker visit your class, or you're going to have a student teacher and she's going to be observed that period or something like that by her administrator, for that period, you're going to have to do it, I keep saying the old way, right? It was from, you know, a week ago um, or a couple of months ago. Uh, go to the calendar and generate a Google Meet link that way. And for that day, again, post it in your stream for the kids to see, hey, today, use this link to come to class. And you can then email, you know, an inv invitation to your guest speaker or other outside guest. So um, here's what, just a quick reminder, if you have set this um, setting inside your Google Classroom settings to be visible to students. I believe that's the wording. If you click the little gear icon in Google Classroom um, and scroll down, I think it's about midway down the list, uh, you can make link visible 
to students. So if you do that, this is what it looks like. I happen to be working on a computer. It happens to be a Mac. For me, every single time I go to my class or any colleague's class and they've toggled that option on, they see this meet link with the long link and the camera icon. A lot of our students are working on iPads, different generation iPads, and for some of them, they see a link. For some of them, they only see the icon, and for some of them, they see nothing. We don't understand what's happening. Um, however, if you do have to do it the old fashioned way, this is if you're inside your calendar, you generate your, you know, the name of your thing, you know, period five for, you know, today's date, you know, something like that. And then you would simply copy and paste this link and post it in your stream or send the kids an email, whatever works, you know, for your students. And that's how you would share it. Um, so hopefully uh, this helps and, you know, clarifies some of the, um, the things that are going on with Google Meet. Uh, please reach out anytime. You guys know where to find me.